my name is Beck and welcome to a unique magic systems video. I'm going to be recommending a few fantasy books that I feel had a fairly unique magic system in them and I actually got this idea from Cass from What Cass Reads so I'll link her video below for you as well. So if you know me well you will know that Brandon Sanderson is one of my favourite authors and he has a tendency to create really unique magic systems in all of his works so to stop myself from recommending Sanderson for basically every book in this video I've just narrowed it down to one and I think it's one of his less hyped books and that's why I wanted to recommend it and it is Steelheart and this is part of his YA series. This series is actually a trilogy and it follows a boy named David and the world in this is very much a dystopian world and the reason for this is because Calamity, a giant star, has imbued people with special abilities. So the characters who are imbued with these powers are actually leaning more towards the negative traits of a personality so they become more selfish and power hungry. Depending on how much they use their ability they can kind of become evil and so the example of this is Steelheart which is what this book is called and Steelheart is the main antagonist in this story and he actually murders David's father and David is the main character so this is kind of a revenge plot of David trying to kill Steelheart but the catch about these powers is that each character who has a special ability has one very specific weakness and it's often a very strange weakness and it's very unexpected as well so David's mission is trying to find what Steelheart's is so he can eventually kill him because Steelheart is basically immune to anything and he can't be harmed at all. I ended up giving this book five out of five stars. I love Sanderson as an author anyway but this book was really standout in the fact that it was just so fast paced and interesting Literally at every turn something interesting and unique was happening and that's why I really adored this book. It was such a unique premise as well and that's why I think that so many people regardless of whether they read YA or not will probably enjoy this one. The next book that I recommend is actually going to be an adult fantasy book so it's a bit different to a young adult fantasy which is what Steelheart was and it is The Black Prison by Brent Weeks and I've actually done a whole spoiler free review of this one. I did give the first book five out of five stars but the rest of the series has been around a four to four and a half stars for me so I feel like it did peak in the first book but the reason that I continued this series is because of the magic system. This magic system is really intricate and hard to explain but it relies on colour and the magic system actually wears away people's lifespan the more that they use it. Some people in this world can see and use colour and some people can't but the ones that can can see one all the way through to a whole polychrome which is all the colours and depending on how many they can see depends on how much more powerful they are. The way people in this book see and interact with colour is each colour kind of has its own property and they can kind of transmute it into something physical and they can build things with it or build weapons with it or obviously fight wars with it which is what this story is pivoting on. That said though even though there's such a breadth to this magic system and you're always finding out new things about it the main character in this name Kip can actually be very unreliable and quite frustrating to read from as a narrator so some of the feedback people have had on this is that they don't like Kip at all. I actually didn't mind him that much and I was keen to continue regardless so it didn't really bother me to have Kip as one of the main characters in this. It is multiple perspectives so you do get a bit of a break from him but a lot of the narrative really pivots on his perspective so if you don't like Kip in the first book then you probably won't enjoy the series as much going forward. We do follow Kip as one of the perspectives in this book but we also follow the prism. The prism named Gavin is a polychrome which means he can wield more than one color. The way that the prism wields color is that the light delivers it through his eyes and then his body splits it off into color that he can manifest physically. This character of the prism without going into too much confusing detail basically balances politics of the realm and also the balance of the realm because color makes a huge difference to the environment and whether that is balanced or not means that things will turn to chaos. The next book that I want to recommend is also an adult fantasy but it's a lot different to the black prism and it's a lot more character driven as opposed to plot driven and this is the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin. This is an apocalypse fantasy and it's partly told in second person and it's also multiple perspective. Magic users as well in this world are actually quite shunned and they're looked down upon and they're used for a purpose and then not really valued beyond that. The magic users in this story are called Origins but I'm not quite sure on the pronunciation of that because I only listen to the audiobook so I don't know the spelling so I'll just put that on the screen so that you can see as well because I feel like I pronounce it differently to how Dave is pronouncing it, so to settle the argument, we're going to put it on the screen and you guys can decide. It's origins. <laughs> That sounds like a fruit. So kinetic energy transfer via heat concentration is how I understand the magic system to work in this story. So basically what that means is if there's a big quake or an earthquake or something that happens in the earth, a character can control it in a kind of telekinetic manner to stop it from boiling over and destroying society as we know it. So to kind of simplify that, the characters who have this 
magical ability are very connected to the earth and they can kind of manipulate it and understand it and feel when something is about to go wrong. And this is why earthquakes play a big part in making this world and in making the characters in this world because a season is every few centuries when the earth basically ends and then society has to rebuild itself afterwards and we are currently in the fifth season. The reason I love this book and am recommending it now is because it's so rich and complex with story and character as well and I basically predicted nothing of what was going to happen in this book. It does its twists so well and it's so believable as well because you just trust the characters so much and you understand the decisions they're making and that those decisions are based on who you've learned who they are throughout the story. The next book that I'm going to recommend is a lot shorter than the fifth season and it is Every Heart a Doorway by Sean and Maguire and this is actually a novella and it's the first in a novella series. This novella series is based on the concept of people going to worlds like Narnia and then coming back to our real world society and then having to assimilate and they're not really succeeding in doing that. And so in this series of novellas, characters have gone to their unique fantasy worlds and then they've come back. And those unique fantasy worlds were crafted to perfectly match their personalities. So to go from a world that you match so well with and then to come back into our reality, they don't assimilate back very well at all. So this school has been created by this headmistress and she has actually gone to and from worlds like this herself. So she understands where all of her students are coming from and what their experiences have been like. And she's also not opposed to stopping the students from going back and forth between these worlds as they need to. I really loved how this concept kind of dealt with what happens after the happily ever after and the characters in this were very scarred and very broken as a result but they kind of found a unity with each other and I love the chosen family trope and that was definitely rife in this series which I adored so much. We get to see different fantasy worlds in each novella and this one is mainly set in our world and it has kind of tastes and experiences of what the characters have been through but it's not until the second and third and fourth books that we get to see things outside of the world that we're used to and I really love that series because of this and each world is crafted so uniquely with its own set of rules and I think that's why I wanted to recommend it for this video. This is the book that I thought of first to talk about for this video and I think that it's also a very approachable fantasy series because of its length and because of the fact that it's also rooted in our world first. So that's the reason that it's really easy to get into and I do believe that the main character in this is asexual and there is a lot of gender diversity and sexual diversity throughout this entire series as well which I definitely support and I'm really interested in reading about as well. The next book that I'm going to talk about is The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon and this is a young adult urban fantasy book. It's set in the year 2059 in Sky on London and it follows our main character Paige Mahoney and she is a 19 year old who basically breaks into people's minds to make a living wage and because of that reason she is a clairvoyant and that means that in this world she's technically classed as a criminal. Paige is only one of the seven or eight types of clairvoyants and if I try and remember them all on camera I'm definitely going to forget one so I'm just going to put a list in this kind of area and that will describe what the other clairvoyants are but in this world as well as clairvoyants there are also ghosts and there's also a market for this kind of activity and because of this underground world and underground market Paige is actually drugged kidnapped and taken to this secret city called Oxford and from there the story picks up and you discover that there are these kind of mythical beings called Rephites I think that's how you pronounce them and there's a whole puppet government system going on with Sky on London and you realize how corrupt everything is but to focus more on the magic this is very much about Paige becoming more powerful in her capacity to manipulate minds and mind manipulation is a fairly common thing to see in most superpowered situations but I feel like Samantha Shannon did it really uniquely with this series and I really like Paige as a result and you get to see her grow and it's very authentic if she gets injured it will translate later on so not that this happens but for example if she broke her wrist in book one then it would translate further into book three where if she got cold or something it would reflect in the fact that her left wrist is aching because she broke it previously and so I really like that it's very authentic and very true to character and it's also a very detailed world as well. I was fairly intimidated when I picked this book up because it did a lot of world building at the very start and I didn't really look at the glossary in the back of the book but I read through the book and just hoped I'd pick things up as I went through and I really did so if you do or don't like a glossary you can flick back and forth or you can just disregard it completely and read it at the end like I did and everything will still make sense. I did give this one a 4 out of 5 stars so I didn't give it a 5 out of 5 but I've since read The Mime Order and The Song Rising and I really enjoyed those books and I did give those ones 5 out of 5 stars so the series has only grown for me and there are more books on their way. So as a result I really love the clairvoyance of this series. I really love the grittiness and dirtiness of it as well and I love that Paige is put through the ringer and she just has to keep standing back up and I really admire that about her as well because she's not 
a heroic type, but she's a very realistic type. And that really shines through in her both her abilities and her personality. So these books plus The Bone Season are what I'd love to recommend to you as unique fantasy books. If you've read any of these or if you have any of these, I'd love to hear about them from you because obviously I really enjoyed all of these and I'd love to talk about them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye.